HPV RC cars have gotten insanely popular in the past couple months, but I still see comments every single day asking what are the best components to buy. In this video, I'll go over exactly what is compatible with what, what are the best components available today, and I'll even go over a bunch of the budget options. I'm Chad Rains, and this is another one of my no-nonsense reviews and tutorials. Okay, first up we have entry level gear. This is where most of us are gonna start with our hobby when we're just trying to see if we like this FPV stuff. Typically, we're gonna have analog video transmitters with analog cameras and either a screen like this or maybe a set of goggles. It's important to note that if you want an analog setup, you can't go and buy some DJI goggles or some walk snow goggles. They're not gonna be compatible. And this is a big question I get all the time. People Google what are the best FPV goggles, and then they end up finding some DJI stuff or something that somebody told them was good and not realizing that they're not compatible with other things. The same goes for Fat Shark goggles. They're not gonna be compatible with DJI goggles. Walk Snail is not gonna be compatible with DJI, etc. I will put a link in the description that has a list of everything that is compatible as far as the systems go. But analog is typically the least expensive and the easiest thing to start with. You can get a little module like this guy right here for not that much money, slap it on just about any RC car and at least tool around your yard and see if you like this stuff. Now, analog doesn't have to be cheap and it doesn't have to have short range. That is going to be the case with these little modules right here. They're gonna be cheap and they're not gonna go very far. You'll see in some of my other videos, I'm going a mile away and I have clear HD resolution right in my goggles and that's just not gonna be the case for an inexpensive analog system. I do get really good range on my super powerful analog rigs. I'll link a video that shows I do get really good range, uh, but those are gonna get up well over $100 for a video transmitter uh, and probably around $40 for a camera. I do have a bunch of really good picks for analog gear. Again, everything linked in the description. Small little screens like this are okay. They can take two antennas and that can allow you to have some upgrades like a directional antenna and an omnidirectional antenna. This helps you go a long distance directly in front of you and even still have a little bit of range when you're behind yourself. This is probably a good time to mention that the Immersion RC Rapid Fire is basically the best analog receiver out there. It's only compatible with a few different goggles though, but it is more sensitive than most of the receivers giving you more range. In that last clip, it was attached to a pair of Fat Shark HDOs. This is another pair of compatible goggles, the Orca FPV-1s. I can't really go past the budget setups without talking about used gear. Right now, you can get DJI V1 FPV goggles for insanely cheap. They are all over Facebook Marketplace because they're not compatible with the newer DJI systems, like the O3 air unit and the soon to come out O4 air units. The V1 goggles can be had for 100, 120 bucks. You can get a Cadex Vista or an original DJI Air unit for under $100 as well. And this system is actually the first one that made it all the way around my block. This is a really, really good system for the money these days, and I can't recommend it enough. If somebody wants to really try out FPV RC cars, DJI V1 is amazing. You don't need my O3 armor or anything crazy. You will have to solder up a cable to make it work. But overall, it's a really simple system to get going too. Okay, next up, we're just gonna tackle a completely different ecosystem. I can't really call it a budget system and I can't call it like the most expensive system either because it's, it's really, it can be whatever you'd like. And that means we're gonna talk about Walksnail. Now, Walksnail has this really cool system out right now that has a gimbal so that you have perfectly stable video with your car. It's literally plug and play. And the goggles that have the head tracking built in, while they aren't the nicest, they are really inexpensive. That would be the goggles L. And the video transmitter that I recommend just about always with Walksnail is going to be the Avatar GT. 
This is the most powerful digital video transmitter available on the market. Now that doesn't mean that it's gonna have the most range, but typically more video transmit power will get you more range. I do wanna reiterate, you want to make sure that you get walk snail compatible goggles. And there's not that many out there, so I will link the ones that are compatible. Technically, I believe the Goggles X are the top of the line walk snail goggles, but I don't think that head tracking is implemented as well as the Goggles L are, so if you wanna use a gimbal, it's a little bit easier with the Goggles L at this time. A cool other note with walk snail though is that it has an external video receiver that can be plugged into a TV. And I know a lot of people don't want to have goggles on their face while they're driving their RC car around. So being able to plug an external video receiver into a TV or a big monitor and tool around the neighborhood from your couch is definitely appealing. Now, I personally prefer goggles over a screen, but I know different folks want different things. I do like that Walksnail and analog systems make it easy to get a screen if you want that. Now, one final note about Walksnail is they have a new repeater that is about to be available. It basically takes the signal from the drone or car to the repeater and then to your goggles. This has the potential to double your range and I'm gonna be reviewing it in a video, hopefully in the near future. Now we're gonna jump into HD Zero. And HD Zero, again, is going to have its own set of goggles. It does have an external receiver as well that can go up on a screen, but I do have to mention, HD Zero is not going to be the best for FPV RC cars. We're not looking for the lowest latency video system out there. We want the most range and we would like a nice clear video. And as far as digital systems go, it is going to have the least quality of video uh, and the least range. Now it will have super low latency. So if you're into racing drones and you need basically zero lag, then it's an amazing system. But typically what we care about with RC cars isn't latency, not with the video system anyway. It just, we never go fast enough. There's almost never a time when you're driving your RC car over a hundred miles an hour in some race, but that's pretty much always the case with a uh, racing drone. So that system, I, I will link the best components for it and I'll even do some tests in the future, but I know from what's available today, HD Zero is not the best system for FPV cars anyway. And that brings us to DJI. DJI is the system that I personally use the most because it has the best resolution video. It also currently has the most range. I'll have to put it up against the walk snail repeater and see how that goes, but this is the one that I've taken out over a mile and it's the one most featured on my videos. DJI is also typically the most expensive for the newer system anyway. And it can be a real pain to set up if you don't know what you're doing. I like to use the O3 Air unit because it has amazing video quality. It has stabilized recording, 4K recording actually. So I do also sell a product for this called the O3 Armor, something me and a friend developed. And I'm not trying to sell out here, but it does make using the O3 system really nice. It's plug and play, no soldering at all, and it sends this arming signal to unlock the O3 Air unit or arm it. And that signal is required to get the full range out of the system. It's more designed for a drone uh, in that regard. And this little board just tricks it into thinking that it's in a drone and outputting its full output power. As far as compatibility goes with the DJI O3 system, it's important to note. The DJI FPV V2 goggles are going to be compatible with the O3 Air Unit and the older Vista and older Air Unit. Any of the newer goggles though, whether that's the Integra, Goggles 2, the new N3, or the Goggles 3, anything that's newer, that is going to be compatible with uh, O3 Air Unit and the O4 system that is soon to come out. But it's important to note that when you are on the firmware that is compatible with these newer goggles, you have to send that arm signal to the air unit. So I did mention that the Vista and the original air unit don't need an arm signal. You can just 
use them with the older goggles and they'll work just fine. That is true, but starting with the goggles too, Integra, you will need that arm signal even on the older video transmitters. I just realized while editing that I should put up a compatibility list and make life easier for everybody. So you can pause the video right here and check this out. It's important to mention that the older air unit and the Vista slash run cam link, those won't be compatible with the Goggles 3 and the new N3 goggles that are coming out in the future. But from the Goggles 2 on, you will need to send that arm signal to get the full range from your DJI system. You can use my O3 armor or you can actually build your own little arming circuit if you program an Arduino. Right here is the wiring diagram and the instructions if you want to go ahead and make one yourself. And of course, I will link it below. I do want to mention that this Arduino version is not my project and I'm just linking this in case anybody didn't want to buy the product that I make and instead wants to make something themselves. This is a good time to mention that currently the best gimbal for the DJI systems is the HEQ. I did a review on this gimbal earlier and with the latest firmware, it is absolutely awesome. There are two different radios that I really like at this time. The first one is the ExpressLRS version of the RadioMaster MT-12, and the other is just an inexpensive radio link. The reason the MT-12 is so good is because it has ExpressLRS built in, which has way more range than any other stock RC car radio, by far. The Radio Link is an inexpensive option that will have more range than your standard Spectrum or Traxxas remotes, but it's not going to come even close to ExpressLRS. Now pretty much all Radio Link transmitters can add a module. Here I'm showing off my RC8X that has an ExpressLRS module on it, but this is the only radio that can do that. I pretty much always recommend to use a Crossfire module because it can accept the PPM input that all of the other radios do. In case it's not clear, if you add a Crossfire module, you will have to use a Crossfire receiver. The Radio Link receivers will not be compatible with Crossfire. Same thing goes with ExpressLRS. It will only be compatible with ExpressLRS receivers. This is how I get the super long control range. The control side is completely separate from the video system. And if you want some more tips on how to get good range there, please check out one of my other videos. So yeah, hopefully this video was really helpful and I cleared some stuff up for people. Sorry if it kind of got rambly and uh, watch it again if there's any parts you think are uh, kind of confusing and you can comment down below and I'll do my best to help. There's also a bunch of other channels that I like that help explain this stuff too. Right here they are. And we even have a Facebook group called the FPVRC Car Facebook group. I will link the Facebook group down below. As always guys, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.